everybody and welcome to this weekly scope 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 from the 20th to the 26th of october hi everybody and welcome to um this week's weekly scopes if you've heard this before you can skip but this is just the intro on how i you know formulate these astrology weekly readings i use astrology and my intuition to give you advice how you can practically use the knowledge of the stars and the planets and apply them to your life so my weekly scopes are all based on gmt time and on vedic constellational astrology so now i'm just going to explain what vedic constellation astrology is and how it differs from western astrology so um the procession of the equinox is sort of like something that happens in astronomy and astrology where the earth's axis undergoes a slow circular motion over um 26 000 years and basically this means that this motion called is a shift in the position of the equinoxes and also the calculation Vedic and Western astrologies use. So around 2000 years ago, the tropical and sidereal Vedic astrology signs of astrology were aligned in the same position. So if the sun was in Scorpio in Vedic astrology, it was also in the constellation of Scorpio in Western astrology. But because of the procession of the equinoxes, this has caused a gradual westward sort of like drift of the tropical Western signs. So basically these signs and the western signs shift one degree with every 72 years so as a result of this ongoing shift when western astrology says the sun is in the constellation of pisces it's typically in the constellation of aquarius um still this is because the degree orb and the date for western and vedic astrology are 24 degrees 24 days apart so in western astrology the sun enters the constellation of pisces around the 19th of february each year but actually the sun doesn't arrive into the constellation of pisces until the 13th to the 15th of march each year and um, vedic astrology takes this into account because it's based on the fixed star positions and vedic astrologers use sidral calculations so um, as a result vedic astrology takes into account the actual positions of the constellations in the sky at any given time and also considers the procession of the equinox adjusting for the shift in the position of the equinoxes over time but in terms of um, western astrology western astrology follows the tropical zodiac which is based on the seasons rather than fixed star positions Western astrologers also do not directly account for the procession of the equinox in their calculations as well. So this results in slightly different calculations and interpretations that are given whether we're using Western astrology or Vedic astrology. So yeah, as I said, Western astrology uses specific dates. So every year, regardless of where the sun actually is at the sky, the sun moves into Pisces around the 19th of February. So yeah, this discrepancy, this misalignment between the tropical zodiac and the actual positions of the constellations has led to a discrepancy between Vedic astrology and Western astrology. So I consider the actual where the sun and the moon are and where mars and venus are at any given time and this is how i formulate these sort of like weekly scopes so yeah thanks for listening to this and let's dive into this week's weekly scope okay so now i'm just going to explain what parallels and contra parallels are in astrology because i use them in my chart interpretation so Decalation in astrology is the measure of how far a celestial body is, such as the sun, whether it's of the north or south of the celestial equator. And the celestial equator is an imaginary line in the sky above the Earth's equator, which us astrologers use in our interpretation. So parallels happen when two planets are on the same decalation, either both planets are on the north side or either both planets are on the south side and this alignment increases the influence of the involved planets 
sense. So it's similar to a conjunction aspect as it amplifies their energy, making the effects of the um, you know planets uh, more pronounced. Contra parallels, on the other hand, happen when two planets are on the same declination, but one is in the north and one is in the south. Um, so this alignment creates tension which is similar to our opposition aspect and it can lead to conflict, challenges and inner struggles between the energies of the planets involved. So contra parallels highlight areas of friction or contrast in our lives, urging us to find balance between the opposing forces at play. When transiting parallels and contra parallels happen, um, they can sort of like trigger significant events, shifting consciousness and periods of intense growth and transformation so I look at these aspects um, closely during chart analysis to understand how planetary energies interact and influence each other during um, a specific time frame to pinpoint key periods for personal development relationship dynamics or career shifts and other shifts like karmic shifts and stuff like that because I just find using contra parallels and parallels gives me more depth in interpretation so I use them so contra parallels and parallels in the astrology serve as markers for potential challenges or breakthroughs guiding us towards more self-awareness love acceptance understanding you know forgiveness for ourselves and others and shifts in consciousness and growth so overall just to shift in our mindset if we allow for it so parallels and contra parallels just kind of like provide valuable insights into the complexities and nuances of the astrological interactions between planetary movements so yeah <laughs> that's the end of what contra parallels and um, parallels are so yeah i'm amani i'm your holistic astrological karmic life coach and first i'm just going to dig deep into you know the aspects that um flavor us <laughs> flavor us yeah flavor us this week so yeah okay so we have four aspects flavoring our week and three of them involve venus so a lot of venus relationship in a value um wanting to seek out beauty appreciating beauty energy this week so the first one is venus making the contra parallel to mars and contra parallels in astrology are just the same as oppositions um so this entered on the 15th of october is exact on the 21st of october and leaves us on the 28th of october the next aspect is Venus making a contra parallel to Jupiter. This entered on the 15th of October, is exact on the 21st of October and leaves us on the 30th of October. So taking us right up into next week as well. And then we've got Venus making a parallel to Pluto, which is the same as conjunction. And this entered on the 18th of October, is exact on the 25th of October and leaves us on the 7th of November. So, you know, stay with us for the next two weeks. And Mercury makes a contra parallel to Uranus and this entered on the 22nd of October, is exact on the 26th of October and leaves us on the 30th of October. Okay, so... Venus's contra parallel to Mars um, brings about a mix of tension and passion in our relationship and creative plans. Positively, um, it can make us feel more motivated, pushing us to pursue our goals um, with passion as it ignites sparks of you know desire within us but negatively it can lead to conflicts um, with people and power struggles. Venus's contra parallel to Jupiter allows us to combine the energies of love and expansion, being optimistic, going after growing, and it can just bring in more abundance into our life and our relationships and finances, it encourages us to embrace opportunities for personal and spiritual development, but we just need to watch out for not overspending and becoming overly optimistic as this can lead to unrealistic expectations. 
Venus is parallel to Pluto, supports us to deeply transform and whatever we're working on this week and it also brings intense emotions adding to the power struggles that can come up this week as well but it gives us the power to unearth hidden desires and it facilitates growth on all levels in our relationships and in our inner self as well so it just allows us to become more personally empowered and go after what we knew source makes us feel good and this can lead to a stronger sense of self and more authentic connections with others but negatively you know with all Pluto energy it can make us manipulate people become obsessive jealous you know and brings like control issues as well so we have to be honest as well as vulnerable but make sure that we assert our boundaries as well and just know you know if you do experience emotions such as jealousy a lot of the time what they're really telling us at the root is that we want to go after um, more things and it's not necessarily about you know wanting what other people has per se so yeah mercury's contrapower to uranus allows us to be unconventional in our thinking it can bring you know sudden insights that help us with our problems as well it can make us have breakthroughs in communication and our learning plans and it just encourages us to think outside of the box and embrace change and it just reminds us to be prepared for the unexpected and it can bring mental restlessness the best use of this energy is to find the balance between embracing the transformative energies they bring and maintaining a grounded and more mindful approach and use the sparks of desire and motivation that Venus's contra parallel to Jupiter brings to go after our goals and passions but be cautious of the conflicts that come up and just be open to more abundance you know even if it's just a simple thing you know finding a penny can bring or one cent or whatever can bring happiness to you as well but just be wary of over spending indulging doing too much and make sure that the math maths you know in whatever you do now i'm just going to talk a bit more about the spiritual and esoteric hidden meanings of these transits this week um so you know in astrology venus represents love and harmony mars is energy symbolizes assertiveness and motivation and all of our drives including sex drives so esoterically spiritually this can bring a tug of war between our romantic side and need for independence we need to balance our desires um, with our actions finding harmony within ourselves before seeking it externally so you know going within being romantic with yourself treating yourself to a date night taking some time out for yourself this week Venus's contra power to Jupiter as I said is all about expansiveness in love and overall abundance we should channel this energy into spiritual um, practices to um, avoid going overboard and you know being creative as well and with Venus's contra power to Mars it wants us to sort of like be assertive but we need to find a balance and ways to express our needs without overwhelming or alienating others as well and this can lead to deeper connections with a greater understanding of our own desires as well so you know yeah so your romance and um, so people you care about no a lot of the time in our world a lot of people have been hurt so um sometimes we have to be gentle um unfortunately a lot of people don't believe in love and stuff and you may be a very loving person so you may be like why won't you accept my love why a lot of time people have been tricked like um, people have offered them love but it's not been love it's been anything but so you know if you really want someone um you know have patience and allow them give them room to grow which is as much as a note to myself as it is to you guys right now as well so um yeah venus is contra parallel to jupiter invites us to explore new experiences and pleasures and this can lead to a sense of optimism and growth we can find ourselves drawn to opportunities that increase our social life and financial prospects 
but we just need to watch out for disappointment if our expectations are not met and by embracing moderation while being open to growth this can help us use the positive aspects of this energy. Venus is um, parallel to Pluto symbolizes power and rebirth so we should allow ourselves to experience deep promotional shifts to swing and it can bring our hidden desires and subconscious patterns to light it allows us to inner reflect and heal wounds related to love and intimacy as well as providing the energy allowing us to dig into our depths of our emotions and our relationship Um, landscape and it prompts us to transform how we express and receive love intimacy and personal values we may also feel compelled to confront underlying um, power dynamics within our relationships prompting the desire for more profound more meaning in our life in our relationships as well so it can bring hidden desires to the surface as i said it pushes us to reassess what truly matters in all of our relationships and explore themes of vulnerability and control and it's important for us to um, embrace the, you know, the need to renew, to transform, to change, you know, and it allows us on a deeper psychological level to release patterns that no longer serve us. And as we integrate these transformative energies this week, we can find that our relationships evolve into more authentic and fulfilling connections, creating a deeper understanding of both ourselves and others that can ultimately empower us to create relationships that resonate with our authentic selves. Now, Mercury's contraparallel to Uranus. You know, Mercury governs intellect and communication and Uranus represents innovation and unexpected changes. So we can just have flashes of brilliance, geniuses, you know, but we have to be mindful of the erratic energy that can lead to impulsive decisions and scattered thoughts. And um, ultimately, it wants us to break free from inflexible thinking patterns and embrace being original and take unconventional approaches and perspectives, challenging, you know, ways of traditional communication and thought as well. We can have sudden epiphanies that encourage us to explore new avenues and techniques and intellectual or spiritual activities and social interactions. So some of you may meet different alternative people or you can be the alternative people person (laughs) that someone meets and rocks their word sort of thing so it's crucial to balance your newfound ideas with a sense of grounding to you know um sort of like avoid changing too much all at once because at that time we get new ideas we get overwhelmed and we just return to our comfort zone but this energy wants us to step out of our comfort zone in small and steady steps you know so by embracing the unconventional while remaining open to conversations with others about their ideas and perspectives you can navigate the challenges and opportunities that this transit brings to you know facilitate personal growth and understanding on a deeper level of your own thought processes and you know build deeper connections with others so a lot of energy just be supporting the going within looking within ourselves and our thought processes in particular and the way we communicate and also you know looking at our relationships how we give and receive love and how we can improve our relationships as well and you know starting with the relationship that we have with ourselves so content creators can focus on content that you know revolve around the themes of past and desire and conflict in relationships using the energy of Venus contra parallel to Mars and um, you know you can um, experience intense emotions yourself and power struggles that can be explored through articles videos or social media posts encourage your audience to dig into the dynamics of their relationships and give content and how they can navigate challenges with grace and understanding 
with the energy of Venus's contra parallel to Jupiter, you can focus on themes of abundance, growth and optimism in love and finances, creating content that inspires hope and positivity, such as writing about manifesting abundance or exploring or exploring ways to increase self-worth to attract better opportunities, you know, giving a balanced approach that yeah, manifestation affirmations can work but only with practical actions to change ourselves on the inward level and our lives on the external level by you know getting the skills and everything we need to improve our financial or spiritual whatever it is we are wanting to improve we have to work for it and we need to be consistent in our efforts as well you can encourage them to tap into the expansive energy of Jupiter to embrace new possibilities for personal growth and happiness in your relationships and uh, financial goals Venus is power out to Pluto. Again, you can explore themes regarding power dynamics and rebirth, exploring the intensity of emotional connections, digging into the shadow, you know, and, you know, giving techniques and how we can do more inner and shadow work in general and encourage your audience to embrace vulnerability and transformation. Because this um, energy allows for a powerful opportunity for personal growth and healing in relationships, um, encourage your audience to explore their deepest desires and fears around intimacy and self-worth guiding them towards embracing their inner strength and authenticity and with Mercury's contra parallel to Uranus um, you can talk about innovation unconventional thinking and you know what happens when we get sudden ideas and how to use them effectively giving tips and strategies on how to do that um, encouraging your audience to embrace change and think outside of the box when it comes to communication and problem solving. It wants you to also explore new ideas, technologies and ways of connecting with others. Um, you can encourage your audience to be open to unexpected breakthroughs and welcome unconventional approaches in your daily interactions and decision making processes and um, you know um, helping them to have fresh perspectives that can help them navigate the challenges of being more creative and flexible in their lives. Hey, so now I'm just going to talk about the aspects that we experience um, daily. So on the 20th of October, Mars enters Cancer. And if you want an in-depth version of that, check out the separate audio on the playlist. The Sun makes a Queen Quartz to Neptune at 4.44. And the Moon enters its disseminating Moon phase at 6.22. So the Sun's Queen Quartz to Neptune happens when the Sun's in Libra and Neptune's in Pisces. And this affects us for about two days. Um, so Mars in Cancer on the short summary level, we can feel a shift in our assertiveness and how we go after our goals. This energy tends to bring a more nurturing and protective energy to our actions and we may find ourselves driven by emotions and a desire to protect our loved ones at this time. So we can channel this energy towards creating more harmony in our home environment and our inner home with ourselves, nurturing our relationships of care and sensitivity it's also a great energy to take care of domestic tasks such as decorating uh, and stuff like that and really connecting emotionally but negatively we can be increased emotions and this can lead to moodiness and passive aggressiveness we can be more sensitive to criticism and feel overwhelmed by external pressures so it's essential to be mindful of not letting your emotions um, drive impulsive actions and words to avoid conflicts at this time and with the disseminating moon phase it allows us to share knowledge and insights that we gathered during the previous weeks it's an excellent energy to use to communicate our ideas with others teach or spread positivity within our community and the sun's queen quartz to neptune 
with the Sun in Libra and Neptune in Pisces. It's a sort of energy that invites us to tune into our inner wisdom and express our artistic side and spiritual connections. Um, positively, we can increase our empathy, which works well with Mars and Cancer energy that's impacting us for the next two months. We can have more compassion and it gives us the ability to connect with ourselves and others on a deeper level, helps us with meditation and exploring our subconscious mind and being you know creative in all aspects but negatively because we can feel confused and it can make us illusional and it gives us the tendency to escape reality we may you know overindulge in toxic habits like drugs and alcohol doing them to excess and we just need to watch out for that you know and make sure although we may want to numb ourselves from life's problems right now it's essential to stay grounded and not let yourself get carried away by fantasy or escapism or, or unrealistic expectations you know ask the right questions you know don't ignore red flags be Courses of deceit for influences or getting lost in daydreams that may lead you astray from your goals. So, for example, some of you, when the sun meets the quincuits in Neptune, may have to, you know, navigate the subtle dance between creativity and intuition. It pushes us to dig deep into our inner realms, tamping into our spiritual connection. And um, the best way to use this energy of the sun's queen quartz to Neptune is to strike a balance between emotional sensitivity and rational thinking. And with uh, Mars in Cancer, you know, care for yourself and others but don't let mood swings dictate your actions and with the energy of the disseminating moon over the next three to five days leverage your wisdom and insights to inspire yourself and others and create positive connections within your community and um, just allow yourself to be creative as you explore your emotions on the 21st of October, the Sun makes a cystic quandit to Saturn, Venus makes a contra power to Mars, the Moon leaves void of course, the Moon enters Gemini, and Mercury makes a bioquintile to the Moon's north node, Venus also makes a contra power to Jupiter, and Mercury also makes a cystic quandit to Neptune. Okay, so the Sun's cystic quandit to Saturn happens when the sun's in Libra and Saturn's in Aquarius and affects us um, for two days. Venus's quantum power to Mars is exact at 7.24 and I explained um, all about this in the introduction. Mercury makes a biquintile to the moon's north node and this is exact at 7.36pm on the 21st today and leaves us in two days. Venus is exact quantum power to Jupiter is at 10.40 a.m. today and I talked about this on the intro and Mercury's sister quadrant to Neptune is exact at 11.51 p.m. today and that's us for two days. So when the moon's in Gemini we may be more intellectual, more social, it's a great energy to use for communication and communication projects, marketing, sales and stuff, learning and multitasking. Our minds may be more sharper and we may find it easier to adapt to new situations but negatively we may be more prone to being scattered or superficial in our interactions and by being mindful of or gossiping or spreading yourself too thin this can take away from your energy and also have repercussions if you say something that's not true and then you know the repercussions fall back on you so just be careful of what you say again instead of gossiping focus on deepening your knowledge and staying grounded the sun's sister quadrant to saturn is a challenging energy we may feel kind of restricted and frustrated because of the obstacles it brings a conflict between our goals and responsibilities and um, it wants us to practice patience and perseverance and we should use this time to re-evaluate your long-term plans and make the necessary changes with practicality in mind and we just may be more inclined towards seeking balance in our social connections and innovative thinking 
it's a time to find harmony between traditional structures and progressive ideas and to embrace being diplomatic and teamwork with, you know, embracing the opportunities that come your way. Mercury's by quintal to the moon's north node allows us to have more mental clarity and Mercury rules Gemini so it's a nice kind of add-on. It allows us to be more intuitive especially regarding you know our sense of self, our life's purpose and destiny. It wants us to align our actions with our soul's journey and this can lead to a sense of happiness and um, our communication skills can be increased making it easier to express our thoughts and ideas in a way that resonates deeply and on the downside there is a risk of over analysing or being overly critical at this time so it's essential to strike a balance between rationality and intuition to avoid confusion or self-doubt the best use of this energy is to journal, meditate or seek guidance from mentors and tap into your inner wisdom. Use this time to set intention and goals that align with your higher purpose. Stay open to synchronicities and signs from the universe that may guide you towards your destined path. Remember, clarity often comes when you allow yourself to listen to your intuition without judgment. And Mercury says to Quandra to Neptune, Add to our sensitivity this week and the deepening um, of our intuition if we're open to it. It's great for meditation and creative expression and using our imagination and brings and supports spiritual insights as well. Some of you may find yourself being drawn to creative writing or digging into dream analysis. It encourages us to trust that inner voice and let our imagination flow freely and engage in activities and experiences and relationships that stimulate our creativity as these can lead to a deeper connection with our spiritual side. And we just have to remember to stay grounded and um, discerning using our judgment and and because you know Neptune energy can also always make us escape into a news and see what we want to see in no red flags be more open to manipulation and wanting to manipulate others and just wanting to be lied to as well so we just have to find that balance to make the most of this mystical energy and the best use of today's energy is to balance rationality with the intuitive depth of, you know, Mercury, Sister Quadrant to Neptune and, you know, find a balance between being practical and sensitive and, you know, just use it to increase the sense of love and abundance while avoiding being of indulgent or confused. It's a great energy to manifest your desires, go after your goals with confidence and tap into your creative and spiritual potential. Stay mindful of moderation and of clarity in communication and the discernment to make the most of this energy. On the 22nd of October, Mercury makes a trine to Saturn, the Sun makes a square to Venus, and Venus makes a sister quadrant to Chiron as well. So Mercury's trine to Saturn um, is exact at 7.35 and happens when Mercury's in Libra and Saturn's in Aquarius and lasts us for the next two days. The Sun square to Pluto lasts for two days um, as well and is exact at 3.15pm uh, in the afternoon. Venus is sister quadrant to Chiron happens when Venus is in Scorpio and Chiron is in Pisces and so yeah when Mercury makes a trine to Saturn it allows us to be more practical and supports us with being more intellectual this week and a lot of aspects are allowing us to do that so that's good it's a time when our communication skills can be more sharper and it makes it an ideal time for more serious discussions and business negotiations as we can be more precise and focused and our decision making abilities can be more on point on the downside we can be overly critical or inflexible in our thinking so it's essential to balance our analytical mind with empathy and an open-minded approach to avoid 
um, coming across as cold and detached and when the sun makes a square to Pluto it brings transformative energies and it can bring um, light to deep-seated issues or power struggles that need addressing it's a time for self-reflection and letting go of old patterns that no longer serve your highest good but negatively it can also lead to confrontations or inner turmoil if we don't manage things consciously and um, be aware of power struggles or control dynamics in our personal professional relationships at this time and Venus is just this quadrant to Chiron can sort of like deepen emotional wounds and healing and these sort of like take center stage under these um, energies it pushes us to dig deep into our subconscious mind address past hurts and vulnerabilities especially those um, concerning our you know sense of um, being attractive and being desirable and if we got you know baggage over past heartbreak still working through that it's ultimately a time to release emotional psychological and spiritual baggage to embrace forgiveness especially self-forgiveness and love and to self-reflect and to sort of like be prepared for intense emotional resolutions and to push you towards more inner growth and understanding and just allow it to you know give you the insights and emotional healing um, that can help you heal your deepest wounds you know and this can come through conversations dreams or other things and by embracing this energy it can lead to breakthroughs in your relationships both personally and professionally and by acknowledging your vulnerabilities and past wounds you can make way for deep healing and great emotional resilience and this period um, invites you to impose conflicts with openness and willingness to understand the underlying dynamics at play where you know people may and yourself are in emotional in trauma and um, you know remember that being vulnerable having emotional wounds psychological and spiritual trauma is not a sign of weakness but a pathway to authentic connections with yourself and profound growth of yourself and others as well and um, you know we can allow today's energy to build us with more self-awareness and compassion and use this power to evolve into a more balanced empathetic and resilient individual on the 23rd of october the moon enters void of course venus makes a trine to the moon's north node and mercury makes a biquintile to jupiter and the moon enters um, cancer as well so venus is trying to the moon's north node happens when venus is in scorpio and the moon's north node is in pisces both water energies and is exact at 3 36 a.m and leaves us in two days the influence of this energy that is and mercury's by quintile to jupiter happens when mercury's in libra and jupiter's in taurus so when the moon's in cancer it adds to the sensitivity and mars is in cancer as well and this can create more nurture and allows for us to connect deeply with our own and others feelings as we can care more and be more empathetic it's a great energy for self-reflection self-care and spending quality time with loved ones and it just allows us to um, be more emotionally secure intuitive and understanding and we may feel more connected to our culture and our roots our nations our heritage our social groups seeking comfort in familiar places or activities but negatively because we can become moody and hypersensitive um, we can cling to the past so it's essential to be mindful of our emotions and not let sentimentality nostalgia or insecurities cloud our judgment right now use this energy to practice self-soothing techniques and healthy expressions of your feelings if you feel affected and Venus is trying to the moon's north node is an alignment of love destiny and spirituality it allows us to 
you know have a deeper connection with others and more spiritual growth in our connections because our relationships and soul journey can be in sync Venus in Scorpio adds intensity and passion to your romantic interactions while the North Node in Pisces emphasizes compassion creativity and intuition and this combination can bring about fated encounters karmic unions and a stronger sense of purpose in your love life but positively you know it encourages us to follow our heart's desire and embrace transformative um, experiences you know Um, but negatively we can get carried away with romantic fantasies and intense emotions so it's important to stay grounded and not idealize situations a lot of energies this week where we can get lost in romance and that and it's good to be romantic you know but just make sure that it's romance and not deception and we have to maintain healthy boundaries and communicate openly and honestly with our partners to avoid misunderstandings or unnecessary conflicts right now and overall you know it just allows us to have experience more personal growth and align with our true path and embrace the energies of love destiny and spirituality with an open heart and clear mind clear mind being operative do not ignore the red flags do not get too carried away so yeah on the 24th of october there's a last quarter moon phase and the moon's north node goes stationary direct so during the last quarter moon and uh, which is between um the full moon and new moon it's a halfway point it allows us to reflect release and reassess our lives we can let go of what no longer serves us make necessary changes and prepare for new beginnings and it wants us to set old beliefs and situations that are holding us back from being our best selves and it encourages us to declutter our life both mentally and physically and create space for fresh opportunities and growth but on the downside this can bring up feelings of resistance or reluctance to um, change and it forces us to confront uncomfortable truths or face challenging decisions um, but if we embrace these challenges we can have more sort of like stability within and the moon's north node goes direct again you know it's another aspect that allows us to align with our destiny and life's purpose it amplifies the energy of moving towards fulfilling our soul's purpose and embracing new experiences that push us outside of our comfort zone it encourages us to step into our true path follow our intuition and go after opportunities that align with our higher self it can also bring fainted encounters synchronicities and a sense of being in the right place at the right time but negatively it can bring about feelings of uncertainty or resistance to change and we may feel challenged to let go of old patterns or beliefs that no longer serve us we don't want to want to just stay in our comfort zone but if we embrace this energy we can you know invite new into our life and it reminds us to trust in the universes your higher power your god's guidance and take um, courageous steps towards fulfilling your destiny on the 25th of october mars makes a set star to uranus mercury makes a quintile to pluto and venus makes a power to pluto as well and the moon enters void of course so mars's set star to uranus happens when mars is in cancer and uranus is in and Taurus. Mercury's quintile to Pluto um, happens when Mercury's in Libra and Pluto's in Capricorn and Venus's um, parallel to Pluto is exact today which I talked about earlier in this and this is exact at 10 17 today so yeah so when mars makes a set star with uranus it just allows us to be unpredictable and take more risks and try new things and supports us in breaking free of the old patterns that a lot of aspects are supporting us with this week but again it can add to conflicts because we can be ungrounded and disruption to our plans can make us restless so it's important to avoid reckless behavior or accidents and do all we can to stay 
you're grounded, you know, and the best use of this energy is take decisive actions towards your goals and embrace change and being open to new experiences but respect other people's boundaries as well. And Mercury's um, quintile to Pluto is a sort of energy and stimulates deep thinking and intense communication and so supporting the other aspects that do that this week and, you know, adds to the fact that we can have a lot of conversations this week that have hidden meanings and secrets can come out and it encourages us to dig deep into complex subjects like astrology um, spirituality, coding, software engineering, whatever it is you're into and explore your thoughts um, with great depth and we may find ourselves uncovering profound insights or having intense discussions that lead to transformative um, breakthroughs and understanding which is good but negatively this is another aspect that adds to the obsessive thinking patterns of this week so it's important to maintain focus and gain clarity to avoid getting lost in power struggles on mental loops as we all can you know and as we continue to embrace you know change and new possibilities this week and allow ourselves to think deeply and communicate intensely we can find you know profound insights and you know we just are reminded to stay clear-headed and focused at this time and embrace the energy of this transit to uncover hidden truths and expand our knowledge and have a willingness to take risks and try new things as this will serve you well in navigating in the potential challenges or conflicts that come up this week so yeah on the 26th of October Venus enters out of bounds if you want to know more about that check out the separate audio in the playlist the moon enters Leo Mercury contra power Uranus is exact today at 1237 and I talked about that earlier and the Sun makes a biquintile to Neptune as well so the Sun's biquintile to Neptune happens when the Sun's in Libra and Neptune's in Pisces and that's for about three days so Venus is out of bounds in sort can make us more spontaneous and creative and desire for new experiences in our relationships and finances and it's in Scorpio so this supports that energy it encourages us to think outside of the box and break free from restrictions in our relationships and anything else that's holding us back it wants us to embrace our individuality and express ourselves authentically and positively we may feel more adventurous and have a willing to take risks in both our professional and personal life but negatively the impulsiveness in our decision making and lack of stability in our relationships or finances can mean that we may overindulge in instant gratification rather than considering the long-term um, consequences of our words and actions right now so it's important to stay grounded and be mindful um, to avoid unnecessary risks or conflict and the moon in Leo can amplify this because we can all be a bit more egotistical and dramatic and um, um, it wants us to have more of a desire for, you know, other people as well. But we may want to uh, seek too much external recognition and attention. But what's really good is that it gives us more self-confident. So it just allows us in our creativity and our passion. And it's a time to shine bright and showcase your talents to the world. But allow other people to do so as well. Because we can be, as I said, too dramatic, egocentric and seek too much validations and people can just shy away from us so it's important to be mindful of the ways that you may be self-centered or attention seeking and find a balance between expressing yourself and considering the needs of others and the sun's biquintile to Neptune is nice sort of energy finishing off this week. Helps us with being creative and connecting deeply with our emotions. Encourages us to be more compassionate, have more empathy and can bring a strong sense of us being idealistic, you know, which is good, you know, in the right doses. It can make us more kind and generous to others, more charitable, more selfless and have a deep Per connection to you know the mystical realm and doing the right thing and we just can be more spiritual with this energy over the weekend so maybe you've had a hectic week this allows us to tap out and relax and meditate do tai chi yoga sing dance scream jump play games you know just chill out a bit but it's important to watch out for being overly idealistic or delusional neptune energy can always drive us to be overindulgent with intoxication 
intoxicating substances so watch out for that um, it's important to balance creative vision with practicality with this energy to avoid disappointment and use good judgment to avoid being taken advantage of and to make the most of this energy you know as I said be creative meditate create music create poetry make love practice acts of kindness and compassion towards yourself and others spread positivity and goodwill trust your intuition and inner guidance while remaining grounded in reality and that's the best way you can you know navigate the challenges that come up at this time so yeah that's the end of this week i'm amani your holistic karmic astrological life coach take care and see you next time and that's the end of the weekly scope 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 scopes from the 20th to the 26th of october